Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, we are gonna install our brand new Texas Speed engine. We have an LS engine that is built to handle 1500 horsepower. I'm gonna walk through the engine build, how it's done, show you some behind the scenes and stuff like that, and then we're gonna install it. We're gonna meet it to our transmission, our intake manifold, all that good stuff. We're gonna install it in the back of the Huracan. And then we're gonna do something a little bit different that we've never done before. We're actually gonna load the Huracan, this work in progress Huracan, up on the back of our trailer. We're gonna grab our other Huracan, we're gonna drive them both up to Seattle, and we're going to Stance Wars to see what the viewers think of the Burnticon. Stay tuned. All right, so getting started, let me tell you a little bit about this LS engine. So it comes from Texas Speed. Uh, they're a huge sponsor of this build. We did not want to build, you know, an LS swapped Huracan and not just go for the best engine that we possibly could put in it. If you're taking out a Lamborghini engine, it's pretty it's pretty high bar that's already been set, so we wanted to put something super awesome in there. And that's exactly what Texas Speed built us here. So if you guys weren't watching on Instagram, we posted a lot of really cool behind the scenes, but it all started with quite a fiasco. We were working on our last engine block, so we tore this whole engine down, we got it down to the block, um, and then we palleted it up and we shipped it off to Texas. And as soon as it got there, they said, Chris, this is a 5.3 block. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So it was an iron 5.3 block. Now what I did when I got that engine was I checked the VIN number and the VIN number was right, but the stamping on the block, I did not take the time to check, which I should have. It's very easy. You can see it right there. It says 5.3.48. So uh, yeah, we, get, we sent them the wrong block. So then they were like, Chris, listen, man, if we do your re-sleeve block, the re-sleeved aluminum block will be lighter and it'll take more power and then you won't have to worry about your block being the limiting factor. And I said, you guys are right, let's do it. So I talked with them about switching to an aluminum block and at the same time, Cletus was going through race week, uh, Rocky Mountain race week and doing really awesome things in his manual Corvette. And I thought, you know what? If we build the crap out of this engine and we just build the crap out of a couple of other small things, this car in theory could maybe keep up with Cletus. It, it, it probably isn't gonna beat him, but it might be able to give him a run for his money. And I thought, you know what, why don't we try? And someday maybe I'll learn how to drive as good as him and, and we could get it down the track going quick. So at that point, we decided to pull out all the stops on, on this build and get it and just build it to as, as strong as they could build this. So it's poured out to 430 cc and uh, obviously re-sleeved and all that good stuff. So we saved about 100 pounds, got extra cubic inches out of there. That's all fantastic. Um, and, and like I said, we went top dollar for this. So we have actually a billet crank in there. We have the Texas Speed forged I-beam rods. We have Wisco pistons. We have a Texas Speed uh, cam that is built, you know, with our turbos in mind. I can show you guys the cam spec sheet in a second. Um, and then we have their PRC heads on here with, you can see the upgraded head studs are massive. These are half inch uh, upgraded head studs. So we went all out on this thing and it should be good to handle 1500 horsepower when we throw it at it. So then after that, we upgraded our clutch as well. Our transmission's good for around a thousand. So hopefully we won't blow that up on the first day. Um, and I upgraded something else already. I can't even remember what it was, but we basically just pulled out all the stops saying we're gonna go from our thousand horsepower bench benchmark to trying to get this thing to 1500 horsepower so we can compete in some fun drag racing events because that's this car is meant to you know be cool obviously be a fun engine swap and and definitely make a statement uh, but it's also we're going to use it for drag racing moving forward so we went big and texas speed definitely delivered so i'm going to show you guys a little montage right now of how this engine was built And all that footage came off of a full episode that Texas Speed actually did about building this engine. So that's just a little teaser. There's a lot more in there. If you wanna know the specifics and details about this engine and, and watch the creation process, I urge you, go watch that full video. The link is in the description. And always guys, if you need performance parts, if you're into this type of stuff, look no further than Texas Speed. A link to their website will be in the description as well. 
support people that support BS for Build. It is a great, great place to go shopping when you're ready to put some serious power in your vehicle. All right, so we're ready to get this thing in the car as fast as possible. We're super stoked on it, but it's kind of a complicated process. We only have one engine hoist, and we've got an engine attached to a transmission with the keeper, oil pan, and intake manifold on it. So first step is, one more time, we gotta pull this 5.3 out, uh, out of the engine bay, uh, but at least it's the last time. So 5.3 is gonna come out, intake manifold is gonna come off, uh, and then we're gonna be shuffling a lot of things around and trying to get that oil pan onto the Texas Speed Engine. All right, we got the engine completely disconnected, broken down, our intake manifold is on the bench over there, and now it's time to harvest the oil pan. So we are gonna uh, go from the outside very carefully, not putting our body underneath this, because that's obviously pretty sketch, and we're gonna pull the oil pan and the oil pickup tube, and then we're gonna go over to our Texas Speed Engine and install it over there. guys it's a new day last night we ran into some oil pan troubles but it was nothing we couldn't figure out basically what happened was the pickup tube o-ring was being really fussy and didn't want to seat up in there far enough that would, would then kind of get our pickup tube up high enough so we could fit the oil pan on as you could assume the oil pan pickup sits really low towards the bottom of the oil pan so it can pick up oil and if it's sitting too low you can't fit your oil pan on there but we got it all set we got it right and we got it in there correctly and then we got the oil pan on there properly so the engine is good to be mated to the transmission over the last few episodes, you guys might have noticed that I've kind of been a little bit AWOL from like being on camera as much as I normally am. That's because I have been working really, really hard on trying to figure out the electrical side of this car to get it to turn on. It's a huge deal. If we can't get it to turn on, we don't have things like AC, the heater system that we're trying to make work isn't gonna work, power brakes, power steering, bunch of stuff is, isn't gonna work. So I've been very, very diligently working on it. I've been communicating with a lot of really, really smart people who have taught me a lot of really cool stuff and I've learned a lot of stuff. And uh, between that and the help from the guys at Mullins Auto, um, who like they've gone above and beyond. Basically, they're letting me borrow a bunch of Lamborghini parts, a, a, a ton, thousands, but I probably have $10,000 of parts from them that they've let me borrow. And then once we find out what's going on and what we need, then I can buy what we actually need and send back the rest. So they've been helping us out in a huge, huge way. So huge thanks to Ty. And I'm gonna put a link to this in the description to Mullins Auto. He's been next daying me everything. So I'm like, I think I need this. I think I need this. And he's, boom, the next day it shows up on my porch. So. I think today's the day, guys. I really think we got this figured out. Uh, let's test it out first. Let's see if it works, but I'm really confident. I think this is gonna work. We're gonna be able to turn the car on. All right, guys, this is a moment of truth. We made the car engine start. Now we gotta make the car itself start. This is like a culmination of every single thing I've ever tried. We've basically swapped every single computer, so if this doesn't work, it's gonna work. It will work. Come on. Oh, 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 yes! Ah, we made it work! And I've never seen a red dash with every single warning light look so damn good! It says our trunk's open, guys. We got the car to turn on. So, of course, lots of errors and stuff like that. That's gonna give us access now to more climate features, all sorts of great stuff. Man, um, this just goes to show that, you know, if you, if you got some trouble and you just keep working at it, keep educating yourself, keep talking with people in the industry, the automotive industry is extremely helpful and people out there are very quick to lend a hand. And, uh, and if you just keep working hard at it, you can figure some of these things out. I want to give a huge shout out to a couple people. A huge thanks to Mullins. Link's going to be in the description. Um, to Gerald, his uh, Instagram's right here. He's the one that helped walk me through the wiring schematics and helped me learn a little bit about that stuff and trace down the wires that were actually important. As well as Gutter Snake over at AGX also helped us out because he's extremely knowledgeable on these things. 
Um, so let me show you what was the big change and then we're gonna slim this thing down and I'll basically show you exactly what you would need to steal somebody's Lamborghini. After a little bit of swift swapping with our original parts going back and forth, I found out the minimum stuff that you need to turn on a Huracan as far as the keys are concerned. So now uh, this could be used to just hotwire a Huracan if you really wanted to, but you know, but more for anybody that's working on maybe a salvage one that needs to know how to turn it on. You need a key that's paired to a BCM2, which is the one that like lives right back there behind the seats. It's also paired to this little steering wheel control module. Uh, it's not a steering wheel control module, it's a steering wheel lock module. So other things like the center computer's there, the gauge cluster, the ECUs, they don't matter. We don't, we don't have any ECUs plugged in. The gauge cluster's from a totally different car. This is our original gauge cluster. Those things don't matter. So uh, my theory is, I'm not 100% sure, but my theory is if you jumped into a car, brought your own key, your own BCM2 and your own little steering wheel thing, you plugged them all in, you could probably start it up and drive away with it. But don't use that, don't use that information for um, evil. Right, we're teaching positive things here on BS for Build. So the last thing that I wanna do is verify that the rest of this wiring harness doesn't work, doesn't matter, because I don't want it in the car if I don't need it. So I'm gonna go through and uh, cut all the hours of hard work that I did uh, mending wires. Uh, I'm gonna cut the looms off and uh, we'll start up one more time and double check, verify. I have fully trimmed the harness and verified that we're still working. I actually tested our climate control. So we have our heater, uh, you know, air conditioning is gonna be something that's gonna be a long process to get figured out in this car, but I do think we're gonna be able to do it. So the heater's functioning right now. The stereo is a little bit mad because of so many errors in the dash and stuff like that. But basically the game plan from here on out is um, when we want to, as we want to, we're gonna go through and start kind of ticking off some of these things that it's mad about, like the coolant temperature, you know, we can wire that in and um, you know, other things like that. We can, we can start to wire things in to our loom as we see fit to make the car more happy. So one of the first things that we'll probably do is um, in that loom over there, there's a bunch of stuff for the fuel level. So what we'll do is we'll jump onto the computer, find out which wire goes to the fuel level, and we'll run our own wires into that system. We have all the plugs here. What we're gonna be doing really is just thinning it down because what we don't need is all the relays and all the fuses that are related to powering the Lamborghini engine. We have all of our relays and all of our fuses managing uh, through our Haltech right there. So we don't need to worry about it. So this is a huge win, guys. I got a heater and I got a dashboard that doesn't really do anything, but it does allow us to have a heater and power steering and all sorts of great stuff. So massive win, massive, massive win. I'm so happy about that. All right, now that we've had our fun with the electrical side, Oscar is here and it's time to uh, refocus our energy back on getting the Texas Speed engine in the car and getting this car on the trailer tonight. So uh, what Oscar's gonna do right now is a little bit of fuel line management, make sure that these fuel lines stay um, positioned where they need to be so they don't hit anything hot or anything dangerous. So he's gonna install a couple tie downs right now. Look at those fuel lines and how professional they look. That's our fuel lines routed. Now it's time to uh, figure out how with one engine hoist, we're gonna down, detach, retach, up, insert, yep. We got our Gallardo uh, transaxle off of the Junkyard 5.3. We took our flywheel, and you probably saw one of the rare times that we use an actual torque wrench on BS for build because uh, don't want to do anything to harm our beautiful Texas Speed engine. So we are tor we torqued uh, all the bolts down to spec, and we'll continue doing that with the rest of the clutch assembly. And right now, Oscar is going to mark our bolts so we know if anything is backing out. So orange is the old school stuff. We're going with yellow on this one.
right, we got the transaxle bolted up to the engine. Uh, this is our second or third time doing this, and we did a lot better this time. Also, this being a fourth gen engine, I think this is a little bit more built around the fourth gen, so it's a pretty smooth application. So that's on. Now we got to change our rigging up so we can get to the front over there, and uh, and then we're gonna move it and throw it into the car for the first time. If anybody wants to know uh, what music we're listening to to set the mood, it's definitely the uh, Tokyo Drift soundtrack. And yes, I changed to White Claw after all your guys' terrible comments about Truly. But I still like Truly. I haven't seen a White Claw tropical pack. If anybody at Truly Corporate sees this, I fully support you. And if you would like to support us back, we do have an empty refrigerator. Just saying. We ran into a little bit of a hiccup in the engine bay, but this is something that we had kind of planned for already. So our Texas Speed engine has, we have kind of our main crank uh, bolt in there already, and we got to put on our balancer and run our belts and stuff soon off of there. So it sticks out a little bit further. So we need to clearance it on the back here. So through the whole center rail of the car going right, right through down there, you have this kind of carbon fiber beam thing, and we're gonna shorten that by about an inch and a half. Here's the piece that I had to uh, remove. It's about two inches of carbon with a little plastic end cap on here. The end cap's gonna add some structural rigidity to it, so I might try and get that off and put it back on there, uh, down there. So obviously, anytime you're cutting out of the structure of a vehicle, it's not ideal. This thing is uh, a metal with metal frames running through, and metal frames actually in the center as well, with a carbon fiber, like a half carbon fiber monocoque design. It's not purely carbon fiber uh, by any means. So taking out any of the like that center structure or something, it's gonna, like, lessen the performance a little bit, but we're talking about a very, very negligible percent here. So it's not ideal, but you always have sacrifices when you're doing an engine swap like this. And that's gonna be one of them because we need room for our LS. And now we've made it, let's get this bad boy in the car. We are in, we got the engine installed. We're gonna tighten up the mounts a little bit and then we're gonna bring it down. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to run the wiring. Then we're gonna run the wiring harness and then get the intake manifold on there. While Oscar's working on the harness, it's time for us to get one good working tie rod control arm for the rear wheel. So back here, this wheel is not really controlled, right? It's, uh, it changes your toe in and out. And uh, it's kind of weird, but these two, for some reason, are longer than this one that came off of the car. And we don't know why. We don't know if it's a different model type of thing or what it is, but it's very, very strange. So we have a working end that connects to the car with a nice little ball joint here. And then we have a good bushing in both of these, but we don't have one in here. So what we need to do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up. We're gonna wire brush this thing. We're gonna uninstall this up here. And uh, I'm gonna cut this bushing out of here by cutting it right here very carefully with the cutoff wheel right here and right here. That'll pop this bushing out and then we can get this bushing casing out of here as well once it's cleaned up and then uh, we'll press this bushing into here connect this thing to this thing and we'll have one good working control arm once again
I am so excited with how this looks. This Texas Speed engine, although it doesn't look like drastically different when you see those PRC heads, and I mean, the valve covers look fantastic. You know, it means business. This thing looks so cool. Oscar's just wrapping up, um, getting the, uh, what did I call those in the last episode? Injector packs, everybody's making fun of me. The ignition coils, guys, I know what they're called. It's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in my brain and sometimes the right words don't come out. Anyways, he's getting those mounted in there, but we don't actually have the right spark plugs for the engine, so we're not gonna run the coils up into the spark plug at this point, we're just gonna leave them as they are. We're not gonna put junk spark plugs in this engine for no reason. Uh, so, that's happening. We got all the engine, or the wiring and everything cleaned out of here, that's all set, and uh, that's ready to roll. So Kyle and I are now gonna move to the inside and the front and we're just tidying up some wiring so we feel safer about it rolling around because uh, we got to roll it into the show and onto the trailer and stuff like that we don't want any of this wiring mess uh, becoming chaotic so we're going to zip tie the crap out of everything We got the front bundled up. We got the interior bundled up. I, I'm i hoping nobody at Stance Wars decides to try and steal any of this stuff. So I just zip tied it all together so it'd be very hard. But I just thought it'd be cool for people to be able to see kind of what's underneath all the wrappings. So uh, now we gotta go ahead and put our rear control arm on uh, this passenger side, driver side rear wheel. So we're gonna get the car up in the air, get that on there, tighten down some lug nuts in the front and stuff like that. And we should be ready to roll it out to the trailer. This car is ready to roll. We're gonna get it down on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna jump you back to yesterday when we installed a winch on the trailer. Cameras don't work great at night, but we got this thing right next to the trailer and uh, we're gonna winch it up for the first time. This is exciting. Hey, we did it. We winched the car up, no problems. All right, we're gonna strap it down and head to Seattle in the morning. We made it, we made it. We're at Stance Wars in Bellevue. Uh, we have got to get our stuff like uh, up, up. So there's a curb here, and then we got this little grass spot, which is pretty cool. So we got this whole spot to ourselves uh, to divide amongst us evenly. TJ's car is right over there, looking good. Uh, so we gotta like drive over a curb. There's Sabrina, hi Sabrina. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we gotta, we gotta hop a couple Lambos over some curbs and then we get them parked in. Booths are set up. Ours are a little bit more DIY than these guys. They ordered a lot more uh, official stuff, uh, but we don't care. We're just here to party. So we're getting some stuff out. Now the hard part is getting the cars. You can see like TJ's car is, uh, it was really, really hard to get it in here. So we're gonna get creative. I think we're gonna jackknife the truck into the curb over there and hope that the trailer will stick out far enough. Dump the uh, LS powered Huracan that way and then I'm gonna drive mine in probably over there. Should be fun. Car 
cars are all lined up. Everything's ready to roll. People are coming in. Now we're just gonna hang out and say hi to people. Should be fun. We're back from Stance Wars. We're back so much we're on the boat. How's everybody doing? I'm having a good time. You know what? Um, the, our, our subscriber count started skyrocketing like lately. Don't know why. After the boat, a lot of people like the boat. Uh, we hit a million subscribers. What could I say, guys? I just the only thing I could say is I just want to remind you guys that it's you guys that watch these videos, especially watch to the end like this, that help me be able to have this amazing job. It is my honor and it is my pleasure to be able to. Um, to build these episodes to help entertain and, and, other, and teach and everything else that we do but I just want to say thank you guys so much because I I have a life right now that I could have only dreamed of I'm literally staring at that's my old office right over there um, and to not to not be doing that anymore and to be doing this and to, to have a, uh, a history over the we're, we're four years the channel is four years old in two weeks so basically in the last four years we have built some stuff that I'm extremely proud of and building stuff that you're proud of is a really really good feeling and I recommend it to anybody if, if you're anyways so I'm extremely proud of that and uh, that is made possible by you guys watching by you guys watching the show and supporting the show it's what makes it all possible so all I have to say about a million is it wouldn't have been possible without you guys and thank you guys so much thank you so much um, I had such a fun time at Stance Wars thanks to everybody that came out I met my uh, my littlest biggest fan Isabella shout out to Isabella uh, it was so much fun to meet her but you know I just had a great time meeting everybody and it was so much fun so thank you guys all that came out um, and huge thanks to Texas Speed for the engine sponsorship. Everybody loved it at the show, and I can't wait to show people what that thing can do, how it can put the power down. You know, we upped the, the power. We started at a goal of 1,000. We're now at 1,500. We're building everything to handle 1,500, and this car is gonna hit 1,500, which is gonna be so much fun. And uh, we got a lot of other great stuff for the Huracan coming in episodes coming very soon. Also, we have new merch drop. It's all available at beautiful.com right now. Um, it's gonna be just below the Texas Speed URL in the description, so guys, if you have any engine needs Texas speed first then if you need if you have shirt needs if you're a human being that wears shirts go to beastforbuild.com we got new Huracan designs out we got a triple stack design that has the 240z the GTR and the Huracan work in progress they're very very cool designs bunch of new stuff just dropped beastforbuild.com so that's it thank you guys all so much we're having so much fun give me a couple days I'm out on the boat I'm celebrating but uh, you know in a couple days we'll have another episode out with some good work done on the Huracan I'll see you guys then thanks peace <laughs>